I said, give me the slow one because this mob don't look much chopped. I've got the nice fast one, so watch me go. The Royal Enfield Bullet 350, yep. The bullet is back. People screamed out for the bullet, and it is the bike that uh, basically uh, built the uh, Royal Enfield legacy. It uses the J series platform, which we see in the uh, Hunter, the Classic, and the Meteor. Uh, uh, a new chassis, uh, a bit more output, and some niceties that we probably didn't get on the old bullet. It's much less vibey, it has a counterbalanced engine. One of my complaints about the old engine was that it was too vibey. It doesn't have a throttle, it doesn't have a clutch, it goes full speed, full power the whole time. built 1901 Royal Enfield and, and Royal Enfield is the uh, world's longest running continuous manufacturer of motorcycles so I wouldn't uh, sneeze at that that's a big thing that uh, 1901 project origin will uh, the replica of course it's not the bike but uh, that's going around the world on a tour and, and the work that went into that is quite amazing uh, they basically built it from a photograph uh, and they built it faithfully of the, of the, of the uh, 1901 bike. Uh, quite an incredible um, four stroke total loss uh, engine that they basically had to work out from a damn photograph. Um, yeah, I'm amazed by that and, and uh, I like that sort of stuff. That, you know, maybe as you get older, you like older things. It's it's sort of a little little window into a, a touch of immortality. And Royal Enfield's like that for me. As you get older, you know, all change is bad. A great friend of mine once said, uh, "How are you, Spider Man? I hope everything's well." All change is bad is one of his favourite uh, favourite sayings. I don't necessarily hold to that, and I don't think he does either. But Royal Enfield allows me to enjoy. Uh, old school motorcycling with modern technology and uh, no wonder they are taking the world by storm in regard to sales, popularity and may I say uh, build quality and longevity which are two things you couldn't say about old Royal Enfields. They're a little bit fragile, the tooling was soft uh, and yeah, they, they weren't a very reliable bike. In fact no British twin was very reliable. Anyone that tells you they had a reliable British twin from the uh, 60s or early 70s is, is uh, scoring some very first-class ketamine. One of the great things about uh, the premium uh, Royal Enfield stuff is you get that hand pinstripe uh, tank which is a uh, you know there's a bloke there that hand pinstripes and, and I've seen it I've been to Chennai and seen it it's a pretty amazing thing well I noticed this one's a sticker so You've got to go for the black and gold, which is uh, that $8,050 uh, right away uh, premium pack. But that gets you that pinstriping, that hand pinstripe. And, you know, there's something I like about that. One of the things that comes to mind when you ride a bike like this is uh, user friendliness and ease of use. And, and that's what we're talking about. It's got a nice light clutch. Gearbox works nicely, snicks through. Um, so I think this is really comfy and, and the seat is greatly improved. Happy with that. You can't talk about massive stuff with a bike like this because it's a, it's a fairly simplistic beast. But it's priced at that rate and that is what the appeal is. I like the simplicity of it. But it doesn't give you a whole lot to talk about. It's nicely finished. Gear, gearbox is alright. Slightly under brake for mine. I'd like a little bit more brakes. Rear spring rates are good. Seating position is good. Seat's greatly more comfortable than it was, and the finish is uh, uh, a bit of a highlight, and uh, I'm pleased to see it from Royal Enfield.